Hello, and welcome to our on-demand session at this year's Virtual EDUCAUSE event. In this video, we're digging into the topic of cross-functional teamwork and the role it plays in driving student learning analytics initiatives forward on campus. During this session, I am proud to facilitate a topical presentation with my colleagues from across the institution at California State San Bernardino. Colleagues here represent an array of stakeholders, including academic and co-curricular assessment professionals, IT project management, the data analytics office, institutional research, and the executive leadership team. By bringing together this diverse set of stakeholders, we will showcase the possibilities that emerge when a campus chooses to have the student at the center of continuous improvement and institutional effectiveness initiatives. So our current product offering at Anthology reaches across the student life cycle and into each department on campus. When I began working with San Bernardino, we had a three-tier approach to implementation that including aligning strategic planning pillars with student needs, while improving data collection and data usage processes on campus. And most importantly, we were working to connect those processes to make this one uh, holistic and connected set of activities instead of a series of activities that may only happen uh, at certain, certain times of the, the calendar year or cyclically throughout a external review process. To turn this aspiration into reality, we designed a launch plan that included the implementation of several anthology student learning analytic tools. This plan connected the campus throughout integrated data and connected experiences. So our outcomes and planning tools, they drive uh, progress monitoring and strategic planning efforts on campus. Our engage and baseline tools work as a robust uh, solution geared toward holistic data collection efforts and compliance assist and insight were there to drive continuous improvement and programmatic effectiveness initiatives. Essentially, those tools were making sure that we were using the data to drive improvement and action on campus. In addition to the tools, we knew that we needed a collaborative and cross-functional approach to implementation and scale, one that promoted using data in real time to understand and improve the student experience. As a guide, we focused on meeting the campus where they were from both a technical and functional perspective. We recommended ways to optimize resources and audited priorities to ensure that we would have the greatest impact with the quickest time to value in the work we were doing. We also used a model of continuous improvement to ensure that the investment in time and technology would lend itself to sustainable and measurable growth. Once we defined our highest priorities and chose project plans that evoked tangible continuous improvement results, we were ready to build our data ecosystem. For this implementation, that meant creating a dynamic, trustworthy, and accessible data ecosystem, and it became our mantra. In the coming vignettes, members of California State San Bernardino and their ops team, also known as our implementation steering committee, share how they crafted a plan to ensure that their data ecosystem accurately represented their students' lived experiences, highlighted key moments of engagement, and how it was accessible to those making decisions on behalf of these students each day. In order to kick off our presentation, Dr. Muriel Lopez Wagner, San Bernardino's Chief Data Officer will share with us how building a data governance charter with the Campus Labs Ops team allowed her to align system level innovations with campus specific initiatives. She cites three key areas that made this project stand out as transformational. Greetings from Southern California. I'm Muriel Lopez Wagner, the Chief Data Officer at California State University, San Bernardino. I'll share with you an example of how technology has pushed the way we thought about assessment and data governance on campus. Years ago, I would say that our assessment efforts on campus have been at a standstill. That the accrediting agency completed the report and gave us seven years, and our campus was done with assessment. Well, the seven years was drawing to a close, and we had new leadership. Campus Labs was recommended to us because of the different modules that would allow us to do planning, accreditation, surveys, rubrics, and capture students' participation in events. During the setup of connecting our PeopleSoft data into Campus Labs, we worked closely with ITS 
and scrutinized which PeopleSoft fields were acceptable to funnel into campus labs and check which data were more accurate. During this time, we discovered our organizational structure in PeopleSoft did not even resemble our human resources organizational chart. So that sparked a smaller cleanup project on our end. Involvement of institutional research was critical during this process because these folks understood how data are reported publicly. An IT person would not necessarily understand the applied use of data, which data, and under what context. We realized that as we implemented various modules in campus labs, we needed project management to oversee the logistics and coordination of other smaller teams. We began to question who needs to provide access for different modules, to whom and for what purpose. Our project manager created a spreadsheet showing these various access features. While we were interacting with project management, we examined our current data governance structure at CSUSD. Apparently, we had an extensive standards and procedures pertaining to data authorities, authorities, custodians, security access control, information security, and operation security, and had a robust ITS governance and information security committees, but we were lacking in policies and procedures pertaining to who may receive student faculty data, student faculty and staff data, what types of requests could we provide data for, what kind of data could we give them or not. That realization led us to use our institutional data team comprised by subject matter experts on campus like the registrar financial aid, institutional research, to write policies, standards, and procedures. After we purchased Campus Labs, we immediately delved into two modules, the accreditation and planning modules. These two modules were important because we were about to start our accreditation process once again. I'll focus on the planning module because this is what re-energized our assessment movement on campus. We began using the planning module to report year four of our campus strategic plan. We reported on activities, some clearly linked up to our goals, but we realized some did not. Rather, I should say, we scrambled to do the reporting around the end of the month of May and June. This was the point when our assessment folks came together to sketch a framework how to rethink assessment on campus, do professional development to refine our current goals, objectives, strategies, and measures. We took this framework and facilitated conversations with campus leadership from the president's cabinet down to the departments in academic affairs, student affairs, and in non-academic division such as ITS. In fact, the focal point in our campus discussions moved away from campus labs and into authentic assessment, realigning our institutional learning outcomes with the university strategic plan and other plans below it, such as academic affairs, student affairs, and ITS. Today, most of the work we are in, in these areas, discussing and clarifying how work done in programs and departments trickle up to the strategic plan and institutional learning outcomes. And naturally, some questions emerged, such as, is there a tool that will help us capture students' participation in our program? Which is where the topic of campus labs is introduced. So in summary, Campus Labs jump-started many of our discussions in data governance and assessment, which led our campus to a reorganization and integration of efforts, bringing us to a coherent movement in continuous improvement with clarity in why we are doing what we're doing and with a hope that reporting becomes easier. Thank you. In addition to translating policies into processes, 
Dr. Tanner Carollo is here to share his expertise on what it takes to roll out a student learning analytics tool in a way that is dynamic, resilient, and consumable for functional stakeholders throughout the campus community. Hello, my name is Tanner Carollo, and I'm with the Office of Institutional Research and Analytics here at California State University, San Bernardino. My role with the Campus Labs implementation is to support the Insight module. And like Muriel said, um, the adoption of Campus Labs has really helped us to take another look at the way that we think about uh, assessment at our campus. And a big part of that applies to the way that we think about data, particularly our data on student participation in the various activities and events that we offer on our campus. And while many of these questions and conversations started prior to the adoption of Campus Labs, to make effective use of the platform, we did recognize that we need to take inventory and really think about some of these things a little bit more closely. For example, what type of events and activities are we offering? Are we collecting data on these offerings and keeping attendance records? If so, how are we collecting and coding these data? And finally, what are we doing with the data that we collect? Are we collecting data just to collect it? Or is this collection part of a larger uh, institutional or divisional strategy moving towards assessment? Looking at these questions through the lens of an institutional researcher, I'm gonna discuss how our office has traditionally received, processed, and presented student participation data, and how we hope to leverage, engage, and insight in the future to improve our process. If you've worked with data before, you know that it's not really easy to take data from point A to point B. Um, this is particularly true with event and participation tracking data uh, that has historically lacked consistency. Uh, lack consistency in the labeling, uh, the structure that's used in the files, and the coding of the events types. Add to that the issue of accuracy. It's not surprising to see 10 to 20 percent of the IDs that were collected as part of the attendance records to not map back to any ID in the student information system, meaning that they are bad IDs and we really can't use them in any part of the analysis. And finally, the use of Excel spreadsheets. Um, Excel spreadsheets are, are great in the sense that people are used to using Excel and they're comfortable with it, but ultimately what happens is, is each department or office maintains their own spreadsheet that was developed independent, independently, which leads to this lack of consistency that I've mentioned. Add to that, when you do have multiple spreadsheets, which often will use multiple tabs, our office spends a lot of time cleaning these data. And then once it's cleaned, uh, the development of a presentation takes time um, because, because these data are typically received as part of an ad hoc request and not part of a larger strategy. The, the development of each individual, each visualization is often designed to fit the needs of that specific office at the time. Moving forward with the adoption of the Engage module, this should make it easier for offices to create and manage campus events. Um, this should then lead to the improved consistency of those data and reduce the reliance on the use of spreadsheets. Then with the various attendance tracking options that Engage offers, we hope this will improve the flexibility to the users and lead to improved data quality on that end, um, which would in turn reduce the need for data cleaning by the Office of Institutional Research. Moving from the Engage module to the Insight module with those data, what we hope to see is a reduction in the need for this manual analysis, because we would then be able to create these dynamic visualizations that have been designed as part of a larger strategy and assessment goals, so they could meet the needs of multiple offices and, and have a continued use to allow campus stakeholders to better tell their stories. And, and finally, it, it's all about the students. Um, as, we, as we collect these data and are better able to present and assess this information, it's ultimately gonna lead to an improvement in the student experience by us better understanding the type of events and activities that we actually offer and who's participating in those events. But we do recognize we're not there yet. Um, there are a number of things that we need to address and some questions that we need to resolve. 
but we're definitely on the right path and we are moving forward. And as a campus, we're very excited to see uh, what we end up doing with Campus Labs in the future. Thank you very much. As Dr. Carollo shared, implementing a solution that drives consistent change is phased in nature. Once data governance processes and ecosystem requirements are put in place, it is all about optimization and adoption of the tools. In this final vignette, Mr. Chris Bradney shares how attention to scalable permissions and broad and deep end user training leads to confident and trustworthy data consumers. Hello, uh, my name is Chris Bradney, and I am serving as the interim director of the Office of Strategic Technology Initiatives uh, here at CSUSB. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, my role as I uh, worked with Campus Labs. And really the first thing um, as I joined this project about halfway through our implementation cycle, uh, the first thing I really encountered as a challenge was how do we manage permissions across all the, the unique tools? And so some of, some of those challenges included, you know, permissions vary tool by tool. There wasn't, you know, a single permission set that applied across the whole platform. Um, each tool had its own unique and, and sometimes varied permissions. Uh, there was no central management console. Uh, there, there isn't a single tool you can go to to manage the permissions across all of the, uh, all of the platforms, all the tools. And ultimately in our environment, uh, the distribute, we, we distributed the authority, <clears throat> the, the administration of these tools to various people around our campus. And so there was, there was really this, this challenge of communicating, you know, across the whole team, uh, what, what the permissions were. And th there was an, a, a variety of complexity that was involved in the various permissions based on the tools. So some tools were very straightforward, some tools um, needed, you know, needed just a simple explanation of here are options, other ones needed a little bit more explanation. Um, and so ultimately our option or our, our, our solution to this was to create a permissions summary spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet we modeled after <clears throat> another project that I'd been a part of. And, and it really just helps people to consume and understand what the permission options are. So the first thing we did, you know, setting out to, to build this spreadsheet is we surveyed permissions across the whole tool, all the, all the whole platform, all the tools to really understand what the options were, you know, where it was. And we also went out to Campus Labs for, for some of their documentation to help provide better explanations for some of uh, what the permission sets did. And then we took all that information and then we broke it down into, you know, what I like to call digestible chunks. So we, we really took the, the, the permission, we coupled it with a description, laid out what the options were, broke it down into categories of different types of permissions, um, and then really just gave it all out to, you know, to our groups as, as something a little bit more easy to consume. Uh, the second thing we did to help ease some of the more complex tools, I think uh, compliance assist was, was really something we did this with, was we collected information about what are some standardized user roles that we see? And then based on those user roles, we can predefine a set of permissions for those groups. And so, you know, for compliance assist for us, we had our compliance, you know, coordinator or, or our accreditation coordinators. And those accreditation coordinators would need, you know, this access. Our contributors would need this access. Our reviewers would need this access. And we would, could lay out very specifically for the administrator of that tool, here's the different permissions you need to give these people. Uh, it just made it easier to facilitate that conversation and in a way of managing all of that. Um, yeah, we mapped those specifically to permission sets. Now that we have this, we really started talking about adoption. So, you know, first we shared this permission spreadsheet with our entire, what we call our Campus Labs Ops team, our, our central team that's really working on the adoption and, and the utilization of Campus Labs as a whole. And then, and then we've used that, we've taken that to really communicate to individual module administrators to facilitate their conversations with their, their team. And so we've been having several conversations about Engage recently and about getting people different permission sets into Engage. Well, now that we have it all laid out, it's like, okay, well, which of these options, you know, which of these permissions do you need? What, what options are needed? 
and it, it's much easier to foster the conversation and the adoption of campus labs by being able to have that permission spreadsheet as a communication device. So ultimately, I, I think it's it's really helped us and enabled us and empowered us to uh, be able to roll out campus labs in a much more concentrated way. Over the last two years, California State San Bernardino and Anthology have worked diligently to maximize the investment of our shared partnership. This partnership centers around capturing their student experience and doing it in a way that promotes institutional effectiveness and continuous improvement each and every day. We've learned that in order to effectively support the campus community, we need a holistic and robust data set. This data set needs to chart progress, growth, and need in real time. This is crucial. These data usage characteristics allow leadership teams to anticipate and pivot their decision making in a proactive and responsive manner. In these two years, we have learned three core values that we'd like to share now. First, collaboration is key. As Muriel shared, policies are abundant in higher education, but tangible and tactical workflows that centralize and streamline process are critical to adoption success. Be sure to check out the Campus Labs Award page to learn more about how California State San Bernardino and others are tackling cross-functional teamwork on their campuses. Next, data usage is a team sport. If you check out our Anthology Campus Spotlight section of our website, you'll see how Drs. Claire Weber and Judith Silva built a community town hall experience at San Bernardino. This experience empowered stakeholders to be active change agents in the accreditation and assessment efforts. This town hall really brought to light that accreditation efforts, although cyclical in nature, really are, are, are lifted up and celebrated and successful when we live continuous improvement on a day-to-day -day basis. And perhaps most importantly, all efforts must point back to improving the student experience. Check out this resource that highlights the work that Dr. Jennifer Mersman and her student affairs assessment team are doing. They're telling the story of co-curricular impact at San Bernardino. They're highlighting the importance of a holistic student experience, ensuring that that data set and captures uh, the experience in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And they're reminding us that this holistic experience is what drives retention and persistence in higher education today. And with these valuable resources, we are concluding our session. We look forward to connecting with you virtually and we would love the opportunity to share our evolving work in the future. Be sure to check out our EDUCAUSE profile for links to the items showcased in this session and for data readiness resources that'll support you on your continuous improvement journey. Thank you.